I mean, y'all hit that like button one time for the culture. I man, y'all know we in here rocking and rolling, having some fun, man. So, like I said, hit that like button and subscribe if you have not done so just yet. All right. This is how we roll. This is what we do in season. We chop it up Monday, Wednesday, Thursdays, baby. All right. And y'all know we got that crazy cousin TG. That's how we living over <laughs> here. All right. <laughs> so, yeah, let me pull this up real quick. <clears throat> Talk a little strengths and weaknesses, man. Steelers, 49ers. Um, what do you got? Three and three? Oh, I wasn't even, you know, as hard on it like that. Okay. But we could do it as three and three. I was more so just, you know, just talk to it, you know? Sure. But um, I know for me, man, when I thought of Steelers specifically on offense, man, some of the strengths I thought for us, I feel like, man, when you talk about the George Pickens element, you know, what he's been showing the consistency with in terms of no longer 50 50 balls and really being 60 40 70 30 type balls i do feel like that is something that travels that was one of the things that we talked about this preseason in the sense of it didn't matter who that was against the way that he's catching the football and high pointing it with his athleticism and jumping ability it didn't matter who was out there i do feel like that is one of the things when you're talking about dealing with a pass fresh like how the niners have you offset that at times by being aggressive. By, man, all right, we're going to max protect this thing. We're going to one or two route these dudes, Deontay Pickens, and that's the one-on-one -on -one that you got to win. I think that for us, I like that a lot because I do feel like Ward is going to spend a little bit more time with Deontay early on until we can see, you know, Pickens obviously showing up the way that we know he's capable of. But that is definitely one of the things off the top of my head that I feel like is going to be a huge asset or strength for us, man. Absolutely. No. Because after Ward, whew, I like our matchups across Absolutely. the board against their cornerbacks. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So, like I said, I definitely like that part of it early on. <clears throat> the other part, oddly enough, they have a dope defense. I love the names, but I feel like we're going to have an advantage in terms of our A gap, B gap, downhill directly at them type runs. Their defense is electric. I love it. They can ball. But I do feel like they are still better designed for playing the pass, not necessarily playing against a team that is going to be trying to run that route. Like I think put we them on can. their heels, yeah, and playing out of them big body personnel groupings, making those DBs that they you know a finger dope player, make them have to tackle for four quarters. Now he can tackle; he's a dope player, but make him have to play that type of game, not the pretty oh let's play okay cover two. Now we doing six. It's the Steve Wilkes, so it's going to look exactly like the Carolina Panthers defense, man. I played with it, like I said, when I was in uh, in Arizona with him. That's what he does. So it's like, man, if they could play that game, yeah, it's going to be a long day for the offense. But the way to keep them from doing that is by punching them, running that rock right at them. I do feel like that is one of the things that with the revamp offense line that we have, we are designed to do that type of stuff. And this is one of those ones for Najee that I'm looking at him like, Man, make Fred Warner and, and Dre Greenlaw have to fight them body blows like that, man. A Jalen Warren at times takes it off the hook. Yes, it's a fastness, and yes, it's certain anxiety that comes with playing in space and speed like that, but it doesn't have the same physical wear and tear on you as hitting Najee when they running that ball downhill like we right. think we're capable of. That's the other part offensively where I'm just like, yo, that's something that we, I feel like, should be able to do. I don't love us just dropping back and having Dan Moore and Chooks, you one-on-one. -on -one, you know what I'm saying? Like, Stay I don't balanced. Like yeah, yeah. Or Hargrave. Now you and say you Milo, you and Daniels, y'all got to hold up one-on-one. Like, I don't want that for four quarters. But to offset that, that Najee part, when you're attacking it, Hargrave is great in terms of rushing the pass, but he's smaller. He's not a big body interior D lineman. Those are some of the things I'm thinking of right now, man. Hopefully Canada's watching this. So, <laughs> Hope so right? what I did almost, we've done this before, right? Where it's yeah, like yeah, you, you look have. at the opponent and yeah, say like strengths, yeah. weaknesses. Heck yeah. And that's what I want. Yeah. Heck you yeah. want me just to list off the three yeah, things yeah. I got? Absolutely. All right. This kind of pisses me off, Let's especially with it, this Bosa deal that just happened. Mm -hmm. It feels like the 49ers have the salary cap turned off right now. At times, it does seem... Dude, like, like this, is, this is insane. Like, how do they have Trent Williams, uh -huh. who they're paying big money to, Eric yeah. Armstead, George Kittle, now De Bosa, De De Debo, $34 million. Debo just got paid. La was Fred last Warner, year? Debo Samuel, yeah. you're right. They just signed yeah. Javon Hargrave to, like, a $20 million yeah. a year contract. Shavarius yeah. Ward's getting double digits. Dre uh -huh. Greenlaw with, like, $8 million. Mm -hmm. uh, Christian McCaffrey they brought over. It's crazy, Paying, right? like, 16 Like, I get they have the cheap rookie quarterback yeah. thing, but, like, this seems absurd. 
to me, <laughs> I linked on L.A. Rams the the year when they're they, gonna have to pay for this. So think about the Rams At the year point. when they won the Super Bowl, and then the year before that when they lost. But that two year window, they brought in a Von Miller, yeah. they brought in a Odell, they had a Robert Woods. At one point, like they was going down the list of all, Allen Robinson, like all these different dudes coming in here, right? I just think to myself that they're doing that approach. Win now, all right? And then after that, we're going to figure out, man, we got to start offloading assets. But I do feel like that is part of it. Because, like, McCaffrey's cap it this year. They only got it yeah. like $3.4 million. Mm-hmm. Like, they're pushing the can down the road yeah. with him for sure. Mm-hmm. Javon Hargrave's cap hit this yeah. year, $6.6 6 like million. Said, it's going to kill them eventually. You just hope that you win your Super Bowl in this window. Because this is a, what, one to two year window, realistically, before them bills start to come due like that. Yeah, just pissing me off. Yeah, seeing seeing all those like big name players on their team, and then just handing out these contracts. I never thought in a million years yeah. Hargrave was going to be able to sign with the 49ers. But that is, I mean, if you're talking to strength, they got star talent. Bro. They, they, they f- got yeah, star they figured talent. out Holy some way smokes. to bring all these guys. Now we got our own guy here, Con, working yeah. the numbers and everything, and we like him. I, I like with what we're doing here. So I'm not. Yeah. It's not like one of those things where. Uh, no, it does piss me off a little bit. It, it does piss me off, but I'm I'm happy we got our own guy that that will yes, be able to pull this stuff off. That's at least following off. suit. At least we feel like I think we're, we're, in the combo. we're able to get yeah. some of these big name guys <laughs> for like value. Yes, it's, but paying Javon Hargrave twenty million that seems overvalued. Like he's nice as heck though, bro. He is, but twenty. We weren't talking about him for twenty million. But that was before the Philly stop too. He's coming off of playing in the Super Bowl, putting together another know, dope season. 20, ten plus sacks. I mean, what's he, he's getting into his early thirties now. I thought like oh, fourteen, fifteen was fair market for him. Respect. They just they just said, hey, they we're gonna give you twenty. Yeah. Maybe they go over it. Yeah. We're randomly gonna give you twenty. I feel you, bro. <laughs> I feel you. Like I said, I don't understand it all the way, but I do know that the rookie quarterback method is real. Yeah. I think Seattle Seahawks back when they were paying everybody, like. I don't know exactly how they do it, but if you got a rookie quarterback, it's just like it's a cheat code. So, if we're looking at the 49ers and how they pulled this off, we should be able to keep a lot of these guys on offense while Pickett's, Pickett's under this rookie we should, deal. Should yes, because they paid Debo, they paid Trent, even though Trent was via was Trent from trade. I feel like he was trade, not free agency. Him and McCaffrey were trade guys. I thought McCaffrey was trade. Yeah, yeah, I'm not sure about Williams if that was free agency remember, or not. Yeah. But they paid Kittle. That's homegrown. Yeah. Yeah. Whose check they got from Baltimore? We should be able to keep these guys. We should. Muth, Najee. Hopefully we'll have a better success of getting our quarterback out of the group. I mean, they didn't rotate it. They didn't went Alex Smith, Jimmy G. Yeah. You had Kaepernick in there for a while. You brought in Trey Lance. Sam Donald's there. You stumbled on the party. Yeah. Another strength I have strength I have listed here is Hugh Funga. The only reason I put him yeah. is because he's like baby Palomalu and all he these is, stories bro. are coming out that Palomalu has trained him trained this whole time. Him. Yeah. How did we mess on that? We didn't. We talked about that. How did we mess on that? No, I'm not talking about us. I'm talking oh, about the Steelers. Oh, the Steelers. Yeah, but so we talked That's about That's Palomalu's understudy yeah. and we didn't draft him. Instead, so Hugh Funga went in the fourth. I mm-hmm. wanted to look this up. That's yeah. the draft we took Green in the yeah. third. Yeah. And we had two fourth round picks. We took uh-huh. Dan Moore. The second one we took Buddy Johnson. Yeah. And Ufunga wasn't picked yet. Yeah, he was right out. Like, not right God. after, but he was my after. But at the same time, Hufunga, my God. nobody thought, Huf- like, Hufunga was good coming out of college, but nobody thought it was going to look like 100 tackles, four picks right out the gate, bro. You know what I mean? If it's anyone, though. Hufunga, yeah. Paul Malu's understudy. Yeah. We couldn't target that and bring him in fourth round. I'm with you. At least for the tie, at least for the name, yeah. at least for the connection. The, yeah, yeah, we're doing all these family yeah. bloodlines things, the Infinity Stones. We couldn't mm-hmm. do it with Paul Malu's guy. Yeah. If there's anyone to bring in, I I would trust his understudy. What, what, or I'd trust Paul what, Amalu in, in his was, training and teaching. What was teachings. the temperature on Troy and the organization? Was that post-Hall of Fame <laughs> This was 2021. Because pre pre-Hall, <laughs> pre-Hall of Fame and post-Hall of Fame, we got different Troys with the organization, man. We just need to know which which version was. One was it, 2021. Yeah. Was he in yet? I don't know. Was it 2021? Was it 2021? It was recently. Yeah. That was another strength I had. And then... Uh, Kyle Shanahan, just the fact that he's been there. System, continuity, I think that counts for something. I mean, shoot, Coach Tommy brought that up too, man. Um, Just talking about literally that system schematically, it it prevents you from being exposed to negativity. They are always, or traditionally on schedule, is very much a pain to play against because it makes you have to be super disciplined with your eyes. 
and it's a lot of the misdirection stuff. I mean, you got a lot of West Coast principles in it. You got timing in it, but it's the misdirection. They're not going to allow you to just sit there, ping your ears back and say, my guy's better than your guy. They're not going to say, TJ, why, man? Just come out here and just rush and beat McKiv- uh, McKivick's one-on-one for four quarters. Nah, you even saw they made the mistake even in the postseason of not even accounting for, you know, Hassan Reddy to an extent. And that was a big reason why, you know, Purdy even got hurt. They build their formations, man. You're going to be seeing all type of behind the, the you know, behind the, or in the backfield movement and stuff like that, pre and post snap. At times, I mean, you could even make a case that it has some mad Canada in it, just in terms of the lateral portion, the misdirection, and making your eyes have to be disciplined. Now, we're going to see, you know, with Matt Canada, he's been showing that he's taking that next step. But we want to just see that's the added part to the Shanahan can't just be this you still got to have that vertical element whether it's you throw the screen pass Debo make a guy miss and he's taking his 70 yards or you're pumping it and you're still throwing it down the field to Debo or Brandon Ayuk or Kittle or something like that but we got to add that more consistently we've been doing it this preseason we get our first real test you know on Sunday but that's definitely one of them things with Shanahan though man that when you just think of the different quarterbacks that have been in that system a lot of them have sex uh success because of that yeah yeah, and sometimes the continuity could become a bad thing if things become stale, but mm-hmm. I don't think the 49ers and Shanahan are at that point. I almost think back yeah. to the Eagles with Reed, right? He, yeah. he was there for, what, 15, 16 mm-hmm. years, couldn't get over the hump. Whereas Shanahan, it, they're, they're still in that, like, what, he's been there six, seven yeah. years. They still, don't do the same yet. Yeah, still getting on the cusp of yeah. things. Like, they're yeah, they're still grinding for it. So I don't, yeah, yeah I don't think is, it's is it a weird? negative thing. Is it weird, low key? I feel like. He's still further removed or still further away from getting there because with Reed, Reed had McNabb. Everybody felt consensus McNabb was a top quarterback in the league or a top quarterback, a Super Bowl caliber quarterback. And it's like, yo, we went to three NFC championships in a row. You finally get Super Bowl and you lose. We watch San Fran win games, go to the NFC championship, go to the Super Bowl. And we're just kind of like, yo, he's doing a great job coaching because we doesn't have the guy at quarterback, right? He has a good guy. Yeah, somehow they're getting there. Right. So Trey that's why Lance I think injuries, it's just, it's just a little bit different. Jimmy G, yeah. no Purdy. Like, you, we look at him almost like he's still overachieving. Right. Whereas with Reed going to them games back to back, yeah. you're like, bro, you're just not good enough to get us over the hump. So I just think that's a little bit of also why you know sure. he still has a little bit more time there. That's a good point. Yeah. Like, the Trey Lance thing would have been interesting if it would have worked out. Because if it works out and now this is your guy you drafted and you're going and you still can't win it, now we're looking at saying it's you, like how the Andy Reid scenario was. I think I've seen some of these stories come out. I don't think he ever really was Shanahan's guy. No. I think Shanahan, Shanahan wanted, wanted Mac. Um, he wanted, yeah. Remember, they talked about that right at the end. And then I think it was yeah. Lynch and maybe the front office uh-huh. that talked they Shanahan went, uh, into it. They Lance, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what it is. Uh, you did know, you have Mac anything Jones, else, or do you want me to list off? Cooked in that thing too, though. Low key, he might have been all right. Mac Jones would have been straight. But um, another strength though, man, like you said, you brought up the star talent specifically for me, Christian McCaffrey. He's one of those guys. That's a mismatch. That's yeah. That's a mismatch. You, you, when you talk about how do you account for him or certain things that he makes you have to respond to, McCaffrey definitely does that um, as a runner and as a pass catcher. Um, like I said, man, it's just. I look at the combo of him and Debo. They are like the weirdest like tandem of stars on a team. You have to account for them, but it's not in the same like sense of when you're playing against a traditional number one receiver and a traditional RB1. I like this better for the Steelers. I do too. I prefer this. Yes, give me the unicorn type dudes versus a true bona fide Justin Jefferson, Jamar Chase, like one of those type dudes. Yeah, give me these like yeah. more lateral guys. Right. I feel like we smaller we, shift we, we guys. doing that. We not tripping on any of that. I feel like because they don't have any real deep threats either. Don't. Like maybe maybe if they had a real deep threat to open things up, right. and then you had the shifty guys underneath. Yeah. Almost like Patriots with Brady. You yes. have like Gronk like taking up the mm-hmm. middle, but then you got Welker and Edelman yeah. or even Randy Moss back like in the, the day. The challenge with Debo is they don't have be, that with the Niners. The big challenge with. Debo and McCaffrey is going to be the open field tackling. They're going to try to get you on that perimeter and make your DBs, make your safeties be 100% with their tackling. And then when they're not, that's when you see Debo, you know, take a screen 50 yards, 60 yards. Yeah. That's their identity, man. But it's one of the ones that was like, our corner is not capable of tackling. Levi, Pat, 
especially JPJ, we feel good about that. Yeah. So, but it's definitely one of the ones though for me, man. All right, all right. <clears throat> you want me to throw out some of these weaknesses? I was, I was for the Niners. I was literally, yeah, we're just yeah, just talking Niners because this is like how we look towards them right now. Yeah. Uh, the Brock Purdy injury. Mm-hmm. Is he gonna be the same? I wonder the same. But Especially the week time, one, too. I I, yeah. I love when we have the 49ers. Yeah. Purdy coming off of this injury, not a full off season. At home. Like, I, I, I didn't think yeah. Purdy was all that anyway. I thought he had an impressive performance rookie uh-huh. year. I, I said many times, I'm taking Pickett over Purdy. Yeah. But now, coming off that injury, too. Yeah, it's, I think that's a, definitely a weakness for them. Yeah, to me, man... Um, I'm back and forth with that, just that specific part, because it's like, man, I watched the preseason and I'm having the same confliction of, do I believe his preseason tape, that second preseason game they had where he did look good, he did look on schedule, but it was two, three series. And it was just that one, you know what I mean? So I'm like, yeah, you look good, but is that healthy? Is that legit four quarters? Is that you taking some shots? Is that you having TJ White, Alex Highsmith, Cam Hayward, Larry Yoga, and Joby, DeMarvin Leal, Chase, and Matthew Ford? Like, I don't know. And then, and just the question of, like, was that just, like, a Cinderella run for Purdy, too? You know how I be feeling about the year one stuff, man. It's like, they ain't got a lot of tape on you. They figuring it out. Respect but, the Purdy for largely, his performance, but still. Yeah. I mean, you got to, like you say, yeah. you got to keep doing it. Yeah, and to me, man, it's the tandem. You can't talk Purdy in that offense without talking Shanahan. To me, Purdy went into a great situation. It's kind of, um, I was looking at the Caleb Williams stuff where he's flirting about like Stan because he's like, I don't want to go to a bad situation. And they brought up Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray. I brought up Josh Rosen. You just go to the wrong situation, wrong time, bro. It will change your life. Yeah. As we've seen with just those three guys and there's countless other guys. But it had me thinking about Purdy, and I'm like, bro, Purdy low key went to a great situation at that time. Dak with the Cowboys, absolutely great. In 2016, situations, man. that was perfect. That changes everything, though. If Dak had went to Cincinnati and they said, "Hey, you're taking the keys to the car," it's a different scenario. But you think about, you know, just landing in the right spot. I do feel like Purdy did land in the right spot, but he has limitations, though, and that's why he was drafted. He was drafted. Like, can't just act like we ain't see that type of stuff. You know what I mean? But no, I definitely agree, though, man. Um, so that was your the first weekend you had? That was another one. I, I, I also have me, Bosa man, and Kittle being out, but Bosa just signed, so yeah. he's not going to be out. The one for me was the right tackle, bro. Yeah. And we should like this one because he's a, a West Virginia guy, man. You know what I <laughs> mean? So, so just take a little added pleasure when you're watching T.J. Watt go up against that young Yeah, guy. I don't even know who this guy is. Yeah. Well, he's been a— Fifth rounder from W. Yeah. Uh, he's Colton a, McKivitz. He's, he's played in a lot of games. Doesn't have a lot of starts. You know what I mean? Good player, not a guy that you want to be your starter. I think of him no different than like a, uh, I don't want to say like a LeGlue, but I'm trying to think of just good. Vet. If BJ Finney was a tackle, like that type of player, like good, respectable. And we got TJ going right. up against him. But you know what I mean? It'd be like, yo, we like BJ Finney, but if Cam Hayward was going against BJ, we'd be over here like, yeah, Cam, we know what time you want, bro. So, yeah, like that's kind of how I look at it. Still a good player. 100%. Like I said, y'all know how I feel about BJ Finney. Like, that's my dude, Swaggy B, 100. But, yeah. You mentioned it with the corners. I think that'd be another mm-hmm. thing. And I kind of mentioned it like a minute or two ago. I like how they don't have like that over the top type of dude on mm-hmm. offense. It's just they're going to probably keep it within. 20 yards from the line of scrimmage of yeah. them trying to make plays. And then it just comes down to the make you miss ability. Yeah. I also have written down, yeah, I already mentioned the Kittle being out. That's obvious. Yeah. That'd be nice for the Steelers. Initially, I had their pass rush from the edge because the Bosa scenario, but now that he's back, I'm just like. But to your point, like their depth isn't would, that amazing right not. there. So if Bosa ain't right physically. Anything, yeah. I'm like, I don't like their rushers out. I mean, they're outside rushing. Because obviously, interior, man, when you talk Hargrave, you talk Armstead, I like them. Love Wob. You know that's my guy guy. Love him. But in terms of outside, it's like you said, if Bosa, at any point in time, if he was tired or anything, I'm just like, I don't, that, they don't have a, anything out there that's make for Dan Moore and Chuke specifically. Like, I don't feel like anything that they're going to put out there outside of Bosa is going to make those dudes uncomfortable like that. 
This is more of a question. Mm-hmm. What about the Niners traveling from the West Coast to the East Coast for Week mm-hmm. One, one p.m. game? Yeah, no, it matters. And and it's at the house too. It and matters, Steelers man. are a hungry team. We're trying to get after it. No, it definitely matters, man. The one o'clock kickoff to me is more so than the travel because obviously when we travel, yeah, like what's their timeline yeah. from going like, from the West to the East right now? They can either leave Friday or they can leave Saturday. It just depends on how you know they feel about it. Um, them coming out here. The flight itself isn't rough. It's the one o'clock kickoff because they will feel that early wake up. That's the difference. At least for us, we would always say like going out there to the West Coast, you at least gonna get to sleep in. So even if it's a one o'clock kickoff, one o'clock kickoff out in Cali is four o'clock for us. So we right. still feel Feels good. later. Yeah, for them, one o'clock kickoff is like what nine no 10 over there so you're getting up yeah. at like five or you six a.m so it's like a way different scenario for those dudes just in terms of getting your i mean it's crazy it sounds like we our bodies are like on a schedule you know what i mean so like right. it's certain times of the day it's like yo my body's used to doing this at this time all right this time i'm used to doing this all right this when it cools down here so that does get thrown off so to speak man so it is gonna have some effect i think like i said for me it's the one o'clock kickoff i I wish it was going to be super hot as well, but since I'm supposed to be there and my fam, I don't want it to be super hot. Like I said, I think you it's going to be mid-70s. <laughs> mid-70s, yeah. sunny. I'm like, I would love for it to be 95, humidity, you know? No overcast, just straight Oh, you know what it is? Little, little overcast. Yeah. Little overcast, 50%. Mm-hmm. Rain, 74 degrees. Yeah. That'd be a great day, day to be like, down I, the I, I for the fans, but you that. want it to be hot for the nines. For, for the nines, I want it to be yeah. hot, but for me, I'm a family. Like, cause they got West Coast cast. heat. That's different from it's East Coast different. heat yeah. with the humidity and everything. Way different, bro. Yeah, that could make them. Uh, yeah, it, it could be a, an extra element, may help them struggle a little bit. Yeah. But overcast, it's looking like seventy-four. Fair enough. A little rain. Enough. A little rain, maybe I could throw them off. Rain, rain, I, we're rain. we're used to the rain here. Hey, look, look, look. Can, can you rain before I get to my seat though? <laughs> That's just, but not hard. I want rain early enough so my seat's dry. I want my seat to be dry by the time I get there, man. All yeah, right. Okay. You yeah. don't have a box. Not for this one. Not for this one. You know, small time, Deke. Not not all of us are streaming on Bleacher Report. Nah, you know what I mean? Up. Not all of us get. I thought I thought nah, you'd man. be with the A list. Nah, I thought man. you'd be with Batch and Bettis in a box. No, 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 man. I'm small time. You know what I'm saying? Hey, maybe Kenny stops by for the I, game. I, I'm too? small time, man. I, I'm just a guy. Okay, I'm just the guy that just knows people. I name drop you. I name drop my friends, and it gets me access to places. That's all. Do you have any others? In terms of uh, weaknesses, yeah. I mean, those are the main ones for me, man. Like I said, because we hit on pretty much like a lot of the similar stuff with that, though. It's like, as much as people are excited about Purdy, I still feel like he is limited in certain areas. I still feel like if you're able to, especially on them first downs, if you can make them have to play from behind the sticks, I just think that puts Purdy in a way less position than where he's in right now, where it's like... Everything is set up perfect. Don't crash the car. When you have him to have to start improvising, him have to start creating, that is the part where I'm like, he. I don't feel like he's capable of doing that to that extent. We've seen Kenny do it at times, and that's why he was a first-rounder. That's why he was a Heisman finalist. Purdy's a good player, without a doubt. But it just is, is levels to this thing, and I just want to see if you could rise to that next level. I got my, you know, I got my doubts, though. You know what we need then? Fast start by the offense. Let's let's get up double digits. What's up, man? First two or three series. That'd be nice. To me, you know that that And that's something that everyone's been complaining about with the Steelers was, the yeah. last couple of years. But we saw the opposite in the preseason. preseason so hopefully this yeah. new look team can do that. Get off to yeah. some quick starts and then, then we could tee off against Purdy potentially. Yeah. No, I'm with you on that, bro. Maybe they'll start abandoning the run game. Yeah. Who knows? You you never know how some of these game flows go. Mm-hmm. That would be very much in our favor. Bro, and we got to get off the field on defense too, bro. Because <laughs> that's the other part with this Niners, how they work so well. Their offense sustains dry, so it keeps their defense fresh. Their defense gets to play from ahead, and they get to play that pretty ball. Where we're going to rush the passer. We got the corners and the safeties. We got a fair warning so we don't have to come out of certain formations. And we could just play that with you all day. And because you could never keep back up, to score back up to get with this, the cycle just continues. That's the part for us. We're offensively. We got to make sure we sustain it. But defensively, we got to get off this field, man. What are we working with on McCaffrey? We got Quan Keen on him. 
You got have some Quan. What's did Kittle practice today? Low Keanu Neal. Did the Kittle practice today? Uh, I don't know. Oh he, yeah, that's the other Because if, if he didn't practice, then I'm gonna throw some Minka in there as well. But uh, if, okay. But if Kittle have Minka exclusively on Kittle, then. yeah, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna need my eyes on that a little bit more. Just because I feel like that can gash me a little bit further, at least. Travis Kelsey listed as questionable for tomorrow's game. Absolutely not. Come bro. on. Uh, they they. Well, that was like the Giannis injury, right? The Giannis yeah, injury in the finals, and yeah. Giannis play. <laughs> That's stupid. There's that's, no reason to risk that. One is not the finals. There's no reason yeah. to risk that. That's really stupid. I'm not seeing anything with Kittle in terms of practice reports. So yeah, if he's not out there, he's not practicing, then I'm adding it's, it's to a, that. It's a growing well, injury for Kittle. Yeah. Now you were the growing specialist when we had our growing <laughs> pandemic. Do you, you gonna take your talents over there? Or we we no. just gonna let him heal on his own, man. No, he, I, I'll just give him advice. <laughs> Sit out a week or two, rest up. Definitely. Season's a long haul. No I, reason to be out there week you one. You don't need Kittle. to take that long flight across the country, man. Yeah, I'd give hey. I'd give Kittle the same advice as Kelsey. It just so happens flight, you're bro. playing the Steelers week one. Yeah, though. don't take that flight, man. Chill out, bro. Put it on the shelf this week. Absolutely. I like it though, man. I like it. Now, Five I, minutes. My oh, God, what were you gonna say? Oh no, no, no. Because uh, the Matthew four one five said that Kittle did practice. But I wasn't sure if we had yeah. any confirmation one way. So all good with that, I trust, man. I trust this source. All right. Well, yeah, because then I seen Juice Bellamy. He said it as well. And then he said it was limited by Stoogie. So I don't know. But who knows, man? All good. All good. Yeah, I don't know his tendencies. Like, if he practices, like, does that mean 90% yeah. chance he plays? Or does he have is it still 50 50? Is he a Larry O? Right. Well, he's always up there questionable, man. But either way, it's a vibe, bro. <laughs> DraftKings Sportsbook. You know DraftKings. Just the top rated sports book and app. In the world, safe, secure, reliable. Sounds like I'm talking about you, bro. I promise it sounds like I was talking about my dog Deke over here. But that's how you need it to be. Whenever you're, you know, deciding to get a little skin in the game and take a chance on making a little money, right? But it's not just that. You know, when we talk anything on this channel, we got promo codes for you, babe. We got something for you, the consumer. So. With it being opening weekend, week one, whenever you do decide to make that first official wager, right? As long as it's a minimum of $5 and you use the promo code MOTES, you will receive $200 in bonus money, draft deposit bonus money, all right? Which you can use to potentially get even more money. I mean, it's a pretty cool concept. Wouldn't you agree with that, man? Right. I mean, I like that, right? You just got to type in a little promo code, Moats, get a little extra cash over here to put a little extra, you know, while you wagering and watching the games this weekend. But at the same time, Deke, I understand not everybody has self-control. Shoot, it was a time, Deke, I ain't had self-control either. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But I got my life together now, all right? But for those of you out there that may be lagging in self-control, you might have a gambling problem. Or heck, you might even know somebody with a gambling problem. Crisis counseling. Maybe you need referral services. And if you do, and you live in New York, well, there's a number you could text. But for everybody else, the number to dial is 1-800-GAMBLER. I said 1-800-GAMBLER. 